Greetings and welcome to today's 10 minute painting lesson. We're going to begin here today as we generally do by applying some titanium white to the base of our horizon with a large damp square headed brush. From there I blend the white pigment upwards, I go back to my palette, grab a mixture of primary blue and titanium white, I apply that to the middle of the sky and then I blend it down into our initial application. Then I go back to my palette yet again. This time I grab a slightly more saturated blue. This has slightly less titanium white in it. I apply it to the top of the sky and then I blend it downwards. The goal through all of this is to render a very smooth gradient from a bright horizon to more of a mid-tone on the top of the sky. And I'm doing this with a very soft touch of the brush to avoid the brush stroke aesthetic. From there, I'm going to dive down into the sand. I'm using a burnt umber with a little bit of titanium white, a little bit of Mars black. These are going to thicken the pigment and they're also going to kind of desaturate it a little bit. We don't want everything in our painting to be hyper saturated or the eye really wouldn't know where to focus. You generally want to save those more saturated colors for your main subjects. From there, I'm going to grab a slightly brighter mixture of that burnt umber. This time it has a little bit more titanium white in it. I'm applying it to the edge of the sand and then I'm blending it back. I essentially want the back of the sand to be slightly darker because the cliffs are going to cast slightly more of a shadow on them where the protruding pieces of the sand are going to have less of an obstruction and less shadow around them. Now, in regards to the actual mountains, I'm doing them right now. I'm using a medium-sized square-headed brush. I'm using this brush because it has a sharp edge, which is fantastic for rendering subjects with sharp edges, much like rocks here. So the mixture is actually a burnt umber, a Mars black, and a very small amount of titanium white. Again, the titanium white and the Mars black are intended to desaturate it. It's darker than the sand. We're using the same colors, but you just, we're using a different mixture of those colors, getting a very different result. So it's cohesive because it has the same colors, but we're getting a different aesthetic and we can distinguish between our varying subjects. Now we just placed down the base layer. We will be going back to that. We'll be adding mid-tones, highlights, adding the light that wraps around them, but we need to let that dry for a second. That way it doesn't get too muddy. In the meantime, I'm going to take my larger square headed brush, I'm going to take some primary blue, some titanium white, all of the pigments essentially that we used in the sky and I'm going to begin working on the water. I'm going to use those same pigments here because it's essentially reflecting from the sky down onto the water. Again, I'm not adding any detail at this point, I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to come right back to it. From there, I'm going to grab some green. As you can see, this is a mixture of primary yellow, primary blue. Again, a little bit of Mars black, a little bit of titanium white. More Mars black than titanium white because it is our base layer. It's meant to be a bit darker, and we will be adding our highlights and midtones on top of it. But right now, I'm using that larger square headed brush because it's allowing me to cut around all of the rock fairly sharply, and it can hold a lot of paint much more so than a regular round-headed brush. So I'm being fairly meticulous with that. Again, much like the rock, much like the water, I'm going to let it dry before I go in and add the additional layers. But in the meantime, I'm going to switch over to my smaller square-headed brush and begin working with some detail here. Now, initially, I'm grabbing a bit of titanium white. There's a lot of water on my brush, so when I apply it, it'll be fairly transparent and we'll get a fairly um, good effect where it kind of feathers off on both sides. We'll get a fairly bright center and then it'll dissipate. And that way it looks like little waves are crashing up upon the water. Now, I'm ensuring that the initial applications are subtle. If I want more, I can go back and I can add them, but I'm not overdoing it initially. I think when a lot of us begin our acrylic paintings, we throw a lot of paint on the canvas and a lot of detail, but if you want to ensure that it's all very cohesive and that each piece of the painting connects, Try doing a minimal amount of detail on each subject, allow them to kind of grow together, and then go back and add it to different areas. 
Now, on that note, here I'm jumping back into the cliffs and I'm adding a mid-tone. So it's slightly brighter than our initial application and I'm applying it to all of the protruding pieces of rock. This is where the light is going to be catching it for the most part, where there are going to be less shadows. It has slightly less Mars black in it, so it's slightly more saturated and bright. Then I'm doing the same with the grass on the top. So it's still a mixture of the same primary yellow, primary blue, titanium white, and Mars black, but I'm using much less Mars black in this mixture. I'm leaving slight openings in the green, so it looks like there are these rolling hills. There are parts that kind of dip in, highlights are gathered on different areas of land, and we get something quite captivating. Then I'm going back into the cliffs now that they've had a little bit of time to dry and I'm adding in some true highlights. So this is a mixture of titanium white and burnt umber. I'm applying it to the areas of the cliffs that are really going to be catching a lot of sunlight. I'm allowing the edges that are kind of facing outwards to be very sharp and I'm doing a slight blend black into portions of the rock. Now I don't want to do this too much as we move inwards because there will just be too many shadows. There won't be a lot of surface area or protruding pieces that the light is going to be able to catch. So be fairly careful with that and allow the highlights to dissipate as you move more so in towards the rock. Also be fairly careful with this. You don't want anything to look too soft. You want all of your applications to be fairly sharp as the subject itself is fairly hard and fairly sharp. Now from there, much like the rocks, we added the darker layer first, then we added our mid-tone, then we added our highlight. We're doing the same with the grass. So we're now grabbing our highlight. We are grabbing a mixture of our primary yellow, primary blue, titanium white. This time it's essentially void of Mars black. And we're just adding this to the areas where we think there's going to be a lot of sun. Also worth noting, as you get farther and farther away with grass, start allowing there to be less and less detail. It's more horizontal brush strokes and they start to connect much more. That's because as things move farther into the distance, we see them much less. We don't have any kind of visual idea of what the detail is going to look like. It's more so blurred and that's very natural. So don't feel like you need to add detail to every single portion of the painting as in real life you wouldn't see detail in every single portion of that landscape. Things in the distance are going to be less saturated. They're going to have more reflected light from the atmosphere on them and they're also not going to have as harsh values either. So just remember that when you're doing these paintings if you want to create a lot of depth, allow the background to be a little bit more choppy, a little bit less saturated, a little bit less detailed. It will really add a lot to the painting and ensure that the foreground, your main subjects, pop the way you want them to. Now, I went back, I added some additional highlights in the water, and that's really what I was talking about. We added a couple uh, little waves into the water. Then we went over into the grass and the rock and we really elaborated on them. And as we did that, we realized that, you know, we could do a little bit more detail in the water. So then we went back to that. It's a great thing that you can do with acrylics because everything dries so quickly. You can apply a layer, you can let it dry, you can come back within five minutes and add to it. So just another larger idea to note on these t smaller 10 minute paintings. Now another thing I'm doing here is adding some clouds into my landscape. I'm using a very watered down small round headed brush, some titanium white paint, and I'm using this because it has a very soft feathered edge and it's going to ensure that when I apply the clouds, they don't have a hard edge on either side. It's much more feathered. So I get a more dense center and then it dissipates on either side. It's a rather simple concept and it's actually fairly easy to achieve with the right brush. So when you're painting, be very cognizant of which brush you're choosing for each situation. Generally, a pragmatic decision will lead to a much better painting and rendering of each subject. 
Now I'm going back down into the water. I'm kind of touching up the waves. I added a little bit of a darker backing to the water just to make it look a little bit more deep and add a little bit more diversity. It also gives the painting slightly more of a vignette effect, which is great because it draws the viewer's eye into the center of the image as it is the brightest portion of the image. So here you can see that I'm really just doing a lot of touch-ups and highlights at this point. I'm ensuring that the painting is interesting, that no piece of the painting is too, too boring, though you should generally add some additional detail to your main subject and ensure that it pops. Now that is the 10 minute version. I did have a couple of extra ideas I wanted to share with you. So as per usual, here is just a little bit of a sped up rehashing of it. So I added some additional clouds in the sky. I connected one side to the other just to move the eye from one side of the painting over to the other. But there it is. That is essentially our 10 minute version, our 11 minute version. I truly hope you enjoyed. I hope you feel like you've learned something. If you'd like to learn more, there is a link in the description to my ebook, Acrylics for Beginners. It teaches you how to blend all of your paints, how to mix with water, what brushes to use, all of the essentials, everything you need to know before you jump into your first painting. You can also get my second ebook, Painting Prompts for Beginners, of essentially 21 digital sketches for days where you want to create, you want to get better at your craft, but you just, you don't know what to paint. With this, you pick an image and you go at it. You have some fun and you create something beautiful. Also worth noting, if you'd like lessons like this but longer, over on the Patreon, I do have hour-long painting lessons in it. You get to see me blending with water, mixing all of my colors, all of the things we don't have time for in these lessons. So go check that out. There are now dozens of lessons up there and dozens of hours worth of content. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I post every Saturday. I hope to see you next Saturday. And above all, as always, stay creative.